Let's look at a really nice viewer suggested limit. And it's also found on the Math Stack Exchange if you'd like to check out the post. So our goal is to find real numbers, alpha and beta, so that the limit is n goes to infinity of the n squared root of one factorial times two factorial times three factorial all the way up to n factorial over n to the alpha is equal to beta. And along the way, we're gonna use a couple of tools. The first of which will be the so-called Stolz-Cesaro theorem, which can be thought of as like a L'Hopital's rule for sequences instead of for, um, let's see, functions. And what it says is the following, or at least this is a special case of it, the case that we'll use. So if we've got sequences of real numbers a n and b n, so that b n is a strictly increasing sequence, so b n plus one is bigger than b n for all natural numbers n, and the limit as n goes to infinity of b n equals infinity, and then we're also assuming that the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus one minus a n over b n plus one minus b n equals l, then the limit as n goes to infinity of a n over b n equals l. So why is this like a maybe discrete or sequence version of L'Hopital's rule? Well, that's because this thing right here can be thought of as some sort of discrete derivative of the a sequence over a discrete derivative of the b sequence. Just like in L'Hopital's rule, you've got the derivative of the numerator function over the derivative of the denominator function. Okay, so anyway, let's get to this. So anytime you've got something like this, which is like an n squared root, which is really like a power of one over n squared. In other words, when you've got variables, in this case, n's in the base and the exponent, you wanna think about probably simplifying using a logarithm. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here. So let's take the natural log of this equation, meaning that we've got the natural log of beta on one side, and then we can bring the log through since it's a continuous function, giving us the limit as n goes to infinity of, let's see, we'll have one over n squared, and then times the sum as m goes from one up to n of the natural log of m factorial. And we're doing that just using logarithm rules on this first term. And then the second term here, which we'll get in the denominator, will be alpha times the natural log of n. So we've got something that looks like that. But now what I wanna do is introduce an n squared to this second term. And I'll do that by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by n squared. And then I'll rewrite this as a quotient of sequences. So I've got my limit as n goes to infinity, and then I'll have this sum as m goes from one up to n of the natural log of m factorial minus alpha times n squared times the natural log of n all over n squared. Okay, so we wanna think about this numerator as like our a n sequence, and then the denominator is our b n sequence. So now what we'll do is apply this theorem right here. So we'll take the so-called discrete derivative of the numerator and the denominator. So let's see, that's gonna give us the limit as n goes to infinity. And what I'll do is I'll rewrite the numerator with a replacement of n for n plus one or n plus one for n. So that'll give me the sum as m goes from one to n plus one of natural log of m factorial and then minus alpha times n plus one squared times the natural log of n plus one. And then let's see, that's the a n plus one term. And then from that, we need to subtract the a n term, which is just the numerator we started with. So let's write that down. The sum is m goes from one to n of natural log of m factorial, and then minus alpha times n squared times the natural log of n. Okay, so there's our numerator. And then our denominator, well, that's simply going to be n plus 1 squared minus n squared. So we've got something that looks like that. But now we can start putting some things together here. Notice that we can combine the two sums. 
So I'll just overline those in blue and observe that most of the terms from the first sum are in the second term. In fact, the only term that's missing in that second sum is the n plus first term. So that means when we take that difference, we're just going to have the single top term. So that top term is the natural log of n plus 1 factorial. Okay. And now let's combine the uh, other two terms as well. That's a little bit trickier, but it is definitely doable. So let's overline those in red and just kind of link them up. And observe that both of them are going to be attached to an n squared term. So let's see. What will that look like? So we'll have plus n squared. And then let's see, this term right here will be alpha times the natural log of n. And then this term right here will be minus alpha times the natural log of n plus 1. So in fact, both of them are attached to an alpha times n squared term. And then we'll have in the end, natural log of n minus natural log of n plus 1. Okay, so that's the so-called top term from the red overline. And then after that, well, we've taken care of the right-hand term in the red overline, so we just have what's left over here. So let's see. That's going to be minus alpha times 2n plus 1 times the natural log of n plus 1. So that's what we have left over after doing that simplification. And then, well, our denominator simplifies pretty easily to 2n plus 1. So we've got something like that. Okay, good. Now, let's maybe bring that up to the top. And, you know, while we're at it, I'm going to say that we will simplify this a bit. We'll simplify this using logarithm rules to the natural log of n over n plus 1. And then... We're actually going to simplify this using Sterling's formula too, but maybe let's save that for the next board. Okay, so I've transposed where we left off up here, but now, like I said before, we're going to use Sterling's formula, so let's recall that. I've got a video on the channel where we derive Sterling's formula if you'd like to check that out. So what it says is that a factorial grows asymptotically to this other object. And by that, it means that a factorial type object can be replaced with this other object in infinite limits. So in this case, I'll write it as k factorial grows asymptotically to the square root of 2 times pi times k times k over e to the k power. Now, I'd like to notice up here, we've got all of that wrapped into a natural log. So let's maybe apply a logarithm for, to both sides of this. We'll get the natural log of k factorial grows asymptotically to, notice it's going to be 1 half times the natural log of 2 times pi times k. And then it'll be plus k times the natural log of k minus k times the natural log of e which the natural log of e is 1. So now we'll simply use this formula up there, making a replacement of, let's see, k for n plus 1. So let's do that. So here we'll have the limit as n goes to infinity. And then we'll have what? So it's going to be a 1 half times the natural log of 2 times pi times n plus 1. So that's from this first term. And then plus n plus 1 times the natural log of n plus 1. And then let's see, minus an n plus 1. But I'm actually going to throw this term in first. So minus alpha times 2n plus 1 times the natural log of n plus 1. So that's from this. And now we've got to recall that we still have an n plus 1 here. So minus n plus 1. And then plus alpha times n squared times the natural log of n over n plus 1. So we just squeezed it in barely. But that's what we have at the moment. And now I'm going to split this into a couple of different pieces. So let's see. I'm going to write this as the limit as n goes to infinity. And then we'll have a half natural log of 2 pi 
times n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. So that's my first piece. And then after that, what I want to do is maybe combine these two terms because they're both attached to a natural log of n plus 1. So let's see. We're going to have something like this. Uh, plus 1 minus 2 times alpha times n times the natural log of n plus 1. And this is all over 2n plus 1. So that just took care of the n terms from this expansion. We also have maybe the constant terms from this expansion. So let's keep those in mind as well. So that'll be plus 1 minus alpha times the natural log of n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. And then we've got the rest of the terms. So let's see, we'll have minus n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. And then let's use a second line here. So plus alpha times n squared times the natural log of n over n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. So we've got a bunch of things here. And we broke it into pieces because each of these has their own limit that we can work with. So this first uh, term has a limit of zero. That's pretty easy to see because a logarithm grows faster than this linear function. So I'll just put this is approaching zero. And then over here, we've got uh, n over 2n type thing. So this is approaching a half. So let's see, I'll put a half here. That's what that's approaching. And then similarly to the, this first term, this term right here is approaching zero. And then, well, this one over here is a little bit trickier. So maybe like, I'll let you do, this is a homework exercise, but what you'll see is that this approaches, let's see, it's gonna be minus alpha over two. So like I said, I'll leave that as a homework exercise. And then all that's left is this kind of middle-ish term. And I'd like to observe that this middle-ish term will only converge if this part right here is equal to zero. And well, why is that? Because otherwise we've got an n over 2n type thing that converges to a half, and then a natural log will grow without bound, so that will become infinite in which whichever direction 1 minus 2 alpha is. But anyway, we want this to converge, so that means that we want this limit right here, or we want this orange to be equal to zero. Now, I guess if it's equal to a negative number, you would get a minus infinity, and that would give you some value for beta, but I'll let you think about that. So maybe we're looking at a special case here where this is equal to zero. Like I said, if this 1 minus 2 alpha is positive, then you'll see that you don't get a real number value for beta. So just to review, if this thing right here is positive, then you'll see that beta must be equal to infinity, and that's not a real number. Now, if this number right here is negative, it does work out, but I'll let you look at those details on your own, maybe post in the comments. We're going to look at the case when this is equal to zero. But then if this is equal to zero, well, then this whole thing collapses and is not part of the equation at all, meaning that we do have a nice simplification. We have this simplification of this minus a half minus alpha over two. But if this is zero, alpha is a half, meaning that this whole thing simplifies to minus three quarters. And well, let's point out here that this is in the case if alpha equals a half. But now check it out. We've got if alpha is a half, the natural log of beta is negative three quarters. So that means that beta is equal to e to the minus three over four. And that gives us, well, a solution. So we've got this ordered pair solution of alpha is a half and beta is e to the minus three over four.